So, but now with this technology that you two have developed and it's been applied in a number of different industries, mm -hmm. now it's possible to use this combination of uh, radar technology and artificial intelligence for, if you like, uh, in, a number of different uh, benefits. So one of which that I was particularly interested in is this medical application and remote sensing. So what problem can this technology solve in the medical space? What is the problem that today people cannot solve? So the problem, first of all, is to remotely sense remotely. And the, and the key here is remote, without touching the patient. Remotely sense vital signs, for example. So I'm breathing now, my heart is pounding. If I want to monitor it, I need to the heart, I want. I need to put a pulse oximeter on me, for example, or uh, you know, a heart heart rate monitor um, that is touching my body. Um, if I want to put to monitor my respiration, for example, which is uh, very important when you sleep, I can't do it. There's there's no device that I can do it besides a strap that I could go 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 over your abdomen and uh, basically measures measures how how many times a minute your your chest goes goes up and down. So. This is, this is the kind of problems we've been working on since we started, even before we started Aleph, Aleph Zero. Um, and basically we have, right now we have a product that measure, measures, remotely measures respiration. I can put a device on your desk right now, or even farther away than your desk, without touching you, put it somewhere on, on the wall of your room and it, uh, it will immediately track your breathing. So I think there's, there's a few uh, answers to your question. One, one is uh, infants, for infants. The other one is for elderly care. And the third one is for sleep, sleep analysis. Our innovation here is basically we have a monitor that tracks your, your breathing and your respiration and your heart rate while you're asleep. For example, if I want to test how my radar device is doing, is estimating my heart rate, I will put, put a FDA approved um, heart rate monitor on myself and I will test them against each other. And from our experiments right now, we are talking about two BPMs, two, two beats per minute accuracy um, in terms of maximum deviation from the FDA approved apparatus. So if you had to compare this with an instrument that goes onto the body, that mm -hmm. instrument likely never fails or hardly fails. Right. What is the, the failure rate of your, uh, of your system compared to this, this other one? When the radar is basically illuminating the subject, we need the subject to stay still. And that is, um, um, in, in most of the cases, not correct when something is on, on your body, you don't have to sit still. But our AI algorithms are able to actually mitigate this problem and continuously monitor heart rate and breathing throughout, um, you know, eliminating the, move, the sudden movement and um, continuing from there very, very fast. The, the other drawback is that the actual accuracy, as you mentioned, in terms of um, accuracy, we are almost as um, um, very, very close to FDA-approved type of apparatuses that are, are uh, you know, you put on your body. But mm -hmm. five years from now, could we think that technologies like this could be, for example, mounted into a car to detect if something is happening to a person or if, uh, let's say, during a car accident, the person is still alive or what type of problem the person has? So th this this is going to go into cars for sure because uh, there's actually it start, it started in Europe and it's coming to the U.S. as well. Uh, there's actually uh, legislation that basically will force I think it's by 2020 or 2021 all the car makers that want their security their safety grading uh, to be as, as high as it is right now uh, to put to put uh, at least drivers uh, to monitor the driver for heart rate and then respiration. So vital signs for the driver. I think they will also be in hospitals, they will be in uh, people's homes. Everybody will have these, these kind of devices around their home in five to ten years for sure. You know, if we look, we, we have looked at applications in, in, uh, of this medical, if you like, medical remote uh, monitoring in three different areas. One is the exquisite medical monitoring, uh, mm -hmm. which I would envision as a certain price point, which is higher because usually in the medical uh, space, we are all ready prepared to spend more. Then we looked into other applications that are slightly different, like you know, like putting this in the house as uh, one of the smart home devices, and, and then we also even thought of putting this in the car. Now, when you put it in the car, especially mass production cars, 
cost becomes a factor. Where do you think um, you know, the, the cost of these devices will be if uh, you have any sense? I know that you work on the core technology. The, the, these are similar costs. For, for example, the radar uh, is uh, between 10 and $20 a chip. So that's what people are going to pay for just for the radar, not for, not for the intelligence, just for the sensor itself. So the entire cost of the thing will probably be in a few hundred of bucks for, for car makers. It's almost negligible compared to the kind of machinery or and, uh, uh, things that they put on the cars now, like lighters, that cost uh, tens of thousands of dollars. 